everybody, and welcome back. RCT Creations here with episode 2 of our Fun Corporation series. In this episode, we're going to go over the end of the 1970s season. We're going to go through our finances of this first season, and then kind of go through our ridership and what our most popular rides, food stalls, and all that other stuff is, so we can kind of maybe start thinking about making some business decisions. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to sharing a little bit more with you as we get further into this video. Alright, well, let's go ahead and get started with our total finances and we can take a look at our spreadsheet here. So if you look at it, June and July are going to be slightly off because originally this was just going to be a sandbox park I was working on before I came up with the series idea. So June, just to kind of uh, take June and July with a, June with a very big grain of salt, July is kind of 50-50. August through the end is going to be perfectly accurate though. So if you look and we kind of go back to our operating season that I showed in the first episode, we can go ahead and look at our finances. So June, July, and August were peak season as was October and our finances definitely do reflect that as our biggest money makers of the 1970s season. Now if you look at September, November, December, these were you know, the seasons where we didn't have our peak guest count. And you can see by total money made and total guest loss that we definitely did not gain any guests and in fact we lost quite a bit with that and a big chunk of that money that came out is going to be for staffing levels so as we go into episode three actually a big part of that is going to be one rezoning our staff at funland and two zoning staff at joyland and actually when we get to joyland we're going to have some full-time staff that stick around and kind of keep everything clean because at actual amusement parks you are going to have some full-time staff that kind of stick around and get everything sorted out as you head to the next season, especially with that maintenance department. So we're definitely going to have some maintenance members that stick around full-time and maybe one or two handymen that stick around full-time to make sure the park is still in clean order. Now, if you look down at Funland and Joyland, Joyland obviously wasn't open, so I didn't have any finances to do with it because we're going to start staffing that park at the beginning of the 1971 season. And as far as Funland goes, the Fun Corporation total is going to reflect exactly the same as Funland had because that was the only park we had open from June through December of the 1970 season. And you can kind of take a look at our next season starting cash as well. So that's what I'm going to want to start each park with at the beginning of next season. So as we get to that point, you'll see the total amount of starting cash we have as we head into the next season. But the big part, again, as I said, is going to be rezoning our staff at Funland because we had a lot of problem areas at Funland. And then starting our staff zoning over at Joyland as well with that. And that's kind of the rundown of the 1970 season finances. And it'll get a little more detailed the further in we go when Joyland opens as well. We'll have a little bit more income, hopefully. But at the same time, with Joyland being closed for half the year, we're going to have some subtracting income as well on that front. So now we're going to go ahead and go over on into our rider ship. So if we take a look at our rider ship for Funland, the most popular rides we'll get into, but there's a peek at our total rider ship and we'll go over on into our ride popularity, which is where I kind of wanted to draw from this. And as we go, I'll add up what we have for total rider ship because I kind of am curious to see what our most popular rides are as we end up adding more and more rides into this season, the coming seasons, I should say. So if we take a look at our ride popularity, again, we only had the one park open for the 1970 season, and Funland is definitely gonna skew a lot more from Joyland as we get into this, just because, again, Funland year-round, Joyland not. So if we look at our top 10 most popular rides, the transport rides are really holding down the top of our, I mean, three of the top five, Three of the top five are transport rides, filling in with our two major coasters in Cyclone and Carabelle. The transport rides, especially Downtown Airway, monorails in this game are just extremely popular. And from the one I wrote at Hershey Park, they're really cool kind of rides too, so I definitely see the appeal there as we get around. And then of course the Downtown, or the main, Midway Main Lift is going to be another big popular ride. It takes you from the front of the park to the back of the park. And then the Fun, fun Lane Railway will do the exact same thing. But as kind of I, I suspected, our uh, top two non-transport rides are going to be our two big coasters. 
So Cyclone, of course, drawing in the biggest crowd of any real thrill ride we have. And early on, I mean, Cyclone is a massive coaster for 1970. Because I believe if, if we were real here, I think the second tallest coaster at the time was like 93 feet or 95 feet, somewhere in that range. And Cyclone is 100 feet. And the only coaster taller than that was uh, Montaña Rusa at La Fiera Chapultepec in Mexico City. So Cyclone being the second tallest coaster in the world at the time definitely would draw some crowds in. And then our, our running out our top five, we have Carabelle Mining Company, which to be expected. I mean, it ran three trains, very popular coaster to the guests, constantly just kind of keeping that throughput up. And then to round out the top ten, we have quite a few of our thrilling flats and uh, actually the ivory towers kind of surprised by those two being as high as they were i mean there's a couple spiral slides or helter skelters really held their own in that one and if you're curious to see why it says ivory towers and midway main lift is combined i just took the total riders because you know to me those are one ride i mean there's two separate lifts and two separate slides but i'm just adding those together and counting them as one unit total there so that's where their inflated ridership comes from on that front. So now if we look over at our bottom five rides, we definitely have some work to do on that front. Probably won't happen starting next season, but maybe as we get, you know, three, four, five seasons in, we start looking at what rides we can maybe think about ripping out and what new rides we can think about putting in. But the merry-go-round in the kids section, definitely, definitely the bottom by quite a bit actually. Because if you look at Mine Town Boating, only 10,000, we ran that as seasonal. We, I think, believe I closed that at the end of the September, month of September. So that one has quite like two extra months where it didn't get any riders. And then Timberland Log Shoot as well has a couple months where it didn't get any riders either. Even though the throughput on that ride isn't going to be great, there's definitely room for improvement with our total rides here. So the two carousels in the bottom five of total ridership for the season. So there's definitely some room for improvement on that front. And I'm curious to see what it looks like at the end of the 71 season with Joyland involved as well. And kind of see where we end up rounding out on that front. So after that, we'll go ahead and move on over into our shop and stall popularity. So I've learned a couple things with this. And that is that you really shouldn't have a bunch of different stalls right next to each other. And that's something I'll definitely update the further into the series we go. Again, not going to be a lot of changes for the 1971 season because as a corporation, if you're opening a whole other park, you're probably not going to not going to want to put too much capital into another park as you're opening a brand new one. So a lot of this stuff is going to stay the same for Funland, but you know, we're opening a whole other park as well to kind of see where everything stacks up within the with, between the two parks themselves. So as far as the top 10 goes, I'm not too upset with how the top 10 looks. I mean, obviously the main lift cola station, way above. I mean, nearly doubling number two just in total amount of customers we've had. And I've got a couple ideas on where to put some other stuff in the future as well. Now, if we look at our bottom 10 for stalls, the arcade is definitely not doing it. So I gotta kinda try to think about what I wanna do with the arcade. Again, probably not going to do anything going into the 71 season. A lot of it's probably going to remain the same. The only thing with Funland I want to do is rezone the staff and kind of see if I can maybe cut down on the total labor costs we have for the handymen in particular. The maintenance, the mechanics I'm fine with. It's the handymen that are kind of drawing a lot, especially for the work I did zoning on the first time because they just there was a lot of dirty pathways that kind of definitely affected the park rating that I want to fix as we go into this next season here so that's going to be a big part of episode three is going to be zoning rezoning the staff for funland and then zoning the joyland staff as well and then as we go through we're definitely going to take a look at what we can remove and what we can maybe do with the arcade because the arcade just was not very popular maybe put a food stand in there maybe pull an adventure land and put um a ride in there eventually but for the 1971 season, we're going to try to keep most of it the exact same, just because I want to see how the stuff at Funland at Year Round Park stacks up against the seasonal fun at Joyland. And that's pretty much all I've got for the 1970 season rundown. So clearly we've kind of seen where we have some room for improvement and maybe 
need to adjust some things. I'm looking forward to kind of getting into that. Um, again, episode three going to be a lot of rezoning staff, and then once we get into episode four, we'll get into the opening of Joyland, or reopening of Funland for the 71 season, and then eventually get into the grand opening of Joyland Amusement Park, which I'm very excited for. So thank you for tuning in for this episode of the Fun Corporation series. If you have any questions, please drop them below. If you have any suggestions, please drop them below. I'd love to kind of get some engagement going in this one, and I'd love to maybe hear some feedback. And in fact, we'll go ahead and jump into this one. So one of the questions I got from my Cyclone POV video was someone asking why I did not use the steeper slopes for... And I'll throw that comment on screen right now. They asked why I didn't use the new steeper wooden coaster slopes for the wooden coaster in Cyclone. And to be honest with you, they didn't exist when Cyclone went up. As a matter of fact, I was just wrapping up the uh, first episode of the series when those pieces were announced. And as we get into future coaster builds and further into the amusement industry as the, as the years go on, we might end up potentially using some of those. In fact, I've got some fun things planned for the future seasons as uh, amusement technology gets better and better as time goes on. So again, thank you for tuning in to Fun Corporation Episode 2 and the wrap-up of the 1970 season at Funland. Very excited to kind of get into rezoning some of that staff and maybe potentially fixing some of those issues and then uh, getting into the opening of Funland for the 1971 season and then eventually the grand opening of Joyland Amusement Park for the 1972 se 71 season as well. Excuse me. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time for the Fun Corporation. Goodbye.